AITA for giving my daughter a breakdown of what it cost to raise her when she asked me for her university funds? My daughter Ava was a handful growing up. Her dad passed away when she was five, and even with therapy she was a very angry child. I still love her very much. She is my daughter, and I would do anything for her that I can. Her dad didn't have a lot of insurance, but enough to pay off a small house and set aside an emergency fund and top up my daughter's 529 education fund. I kept adding to it over the years. Not much but as I could. When she was 11 I met and married my husband. I thought Ava was okay with it. She never brought up any problems to me or in our therapy sessions. She was not. When she was 13 she accused him of something inappropriate. I called the cops immediately. He was arrested and he lost his job. He was innocent. She did it to get rid of him. We divorced. I was obviously heartbroken. I did my best not to take it out on her. I did punish her. She started acting out. She got expelled from school. Then another. I ended up having to send her to a private school. Even with a voucher it was expensive. It worked though. She is graduating this year with honors and a scholarship. She asked me about the money in her account. I said it was all gone. She got very upset because her scholarship won't cover all costs. Even with financial aid, she will still be paying a fair amount. I said I would co-sign a student loan for what she needs. She said that she wanted to know where the money went that I wasted. So I got out a pen and paper and wrote it all down. The cost of my divorce. The rising cost of living that I paid for by myself since I didn't have a partner. Her tuition and fees for private school. By the end she was crying and saying that I was blaming her for everything. I never have. I did punish her for the trouble she caused with my ex, but I think that was reasonable. She is upset that she will have to take out a loan. I also made it very clear that I would not be responsible for paying it back. She thinks I'm being cruel by saying that she is responsible for stupid things she did as a child. I'm not. But I cannot pull the money I had to spend because of her out of my ass. If you co-sign for a loan, you could end up being responsible for paying it back. This, co-signing means you put your credit history on the line to help her get approved for the loans, and in the event she defaults, you become responsible. Do not do this if you do not intend to ensure she can make her payments. And, for some less reputable private loan agencies, a co-signer's death triggers automatic default, and the remaining balance is owed immediately. What? That's insane. She is old enough to understand the price of failure. Because of her advanced age, and the fact that this is the first time she has had to pay for her ignorance, she is reacting strongly. Although it won't be the last time, the initial experience is terrible. Either she learns from it, or it becomes an even greater waste, and that is what matters. You want to co-sign, but are telling her you're not responsible for paying it back? That's not how that works. If you don't trust her, then don't co-sign. And honestly, I would not. Don't co-sign the loan. She has to figure that out on her own. I'm in school and I know how much my parents work. I would never ask them to do that for me. They are doing the best they can. Please tell me that your ex-boyfriend's accusations were dropped and that he was spared from jail or other consequences. OP explicitly said that he lost his job, so even if the accusations were eventually dropped there were still major consequences. Fucked up his resume and reputation in whatever industry he was in. Word spreads. I said I would co-sign a student loan, and I also made it very clear that I would not be responsible for paying it back. This a non sequitur. Do not co-sign a loan, or you will be paying it back when she defaults. She's a brat. She will never repay that load. It will bring her great joy to stick it to you just like she did to your ex. She will just have to figure it out. Reddit rule number one. Never ask a question you don't want to hear the answer to. It's not you blaming her. It's the reality of the situation. She's going to have to learn how to deal with it, and I doubt it will be easy. One tip though is state slash local slash public college. The cost is orders of magnitude lower than some private schools, and the education is pretty much the same. I bounced around some, attended two private schools and one state school. Not the main campus even, but the commuter campus in the major city. The education, the help and extra support I got from advisors and teachers, and the opportunities for pre-professional development I got at the state school was several orders of magnitude better than what I had access to at the private institutions. I'll go one level further. I went to a well-regarded state school, which was fine, and I had a partial scholarship. But I wanted to graduate early, 
So in the summers, the first took someone half-time classes at the local community college that transferred credits easily. The advisors at my state school were a joke. Too many kids. Nobody cared. You'd spend a week trying to get an appointment with your advisor just to show up and find that she went on maternity leave months ago. But nobody was covering for her, and you were just SOL. The community college, though, they were psyched if a student showed up and asked about grants slash aid slash development goals. My education minor required a six-week student teaching term, but my university had a two-year wait on placing you. So it made that minor literally impossible, unless you signed up for the student teaching assignment as a freshman. So I switched the requirement to my community college, and they had me student teaching at a local high school in three months. I know some jobs care about the prestige of your diploma, but unless you're going to work for a snooty company, nobody really gives a shit where you got your credits in the end. Advisors and programs can be good or bad at any school, regardless of how much your tuition costs. I wish more students knew that you're totally free to seek out supplementary programs as long as you do your research and credits transfer. The fact that OP apparently bought a house, got married, then divorced, yet still doesn't understand what cosign means makes me think this is just a karma farming story. Come on. This, plus OP's post history, makes me agree. I see no post history. Wonder if they just scrubbed it. Redditor for 16 hours. It's a throwaway. If you cosign a loan, then yes, you will be paying it back if she doesn't. You did what you had to. She dealt with what she dealt with. This isn't some punishment, it's where you're at, which she helped cause. You both are dealing with it. And yep, her education is her problem. I'm still paying for MY loans. I got my kids covered on food and rent, but I can't afford their tuition. Get scholarships. Get a job. Do tasks on campus to save money. She has options. I was going to say that the daughter may be remorseful for what she did as a child and deserved a chance, but the rest sounded like she is still defensive. Even if she did stupid things as a child, she could apologize, be regretful, etc. Doesn't seem to be the case. It's all about her. Yikes. NTA. If you're not prepared to pay back her loans, do not co-sign. Wait. Please tell me the charges were dropped on your ex and that he didn't have to go to prison or anything. We don't even know if the daughter admitted to lying. If he was proven innocent in court doesn't mean anything. Plenty of abusers get their accusations thrown out by therapists and juries because the victim's biological parent sides with their lover against their own kid. A lot of victims grow up and maintain that they were not lying, and yet their own parents defended their abuser. Opie still hasn't said how it came out that the ex-husband was innocent. Op commented to clarify that the accusations were discredited because her husband's vehicle, which was a company vehicle, had a dash cam and tracker, which showed him to be on the other side of the city when the abuse is supposed to have occurred. After this came to light, her daughter admitted to having lied. Exactly. Courts don't prove anyone innocent. Abuse cases are notoriously hard to get a guilty conviction. Also, children who are abused sometimes intentionally accuse the wrong person of perpetrating the abuse. A reason for that is that children often target their negative emotions slash feelings at perceived, safe, people. It is irrational but children are, famously, irrational. A good social worker slash police detective well-versed in CSA would know how to pick up on those signs. This post reads like karma farming but I did want to point this out. If this post did happen, it is possible OP's daughter was abused, even if the ex-husband didn't do it. I forgot to add in my parent comment but piggybacking on what you said. Abusers will often seek out children who have prior trauma or are emotionally unstable because it's easier for their abuse to go unpunished because therapists, parents, teachers, and family will think the child is just acting up again. The victim's cries for help are unfortunately seen in a boy who cried wolf perspective, which is ironically one of my least favorite books because it enforces the idea that a victim is to blame if they have a history of complaining too much. It doesn't matter if a child lied a hundred times about other things before. An accusation of abuse should be investigated thoroughly, especially if the child has mental health problems due to the loss of a parent. Finally, one comment that actually cared about the big picture. Everyone just ignores that they collectively destroyed an innocent man's life. Even if he wasn't charged, the accusation is enough to ruin his life. They both just treat it as some minor consequence of the daughter being an angry child. I do want to know more details on this particularly. What happened to him? Because those are life-altering accusations. 
But it sounded as if the charges were dropped B.C. O.P. said it turned out he was innocent. I assume it means O.P.'s daughter admitted to lying. I think O.P. did the right thing in believing her daughter unquestioningly. Too many parents don't believe their children. I've known mothers who have not supported their children and have sided with their partners. It's terrible. But I do want more details on this whole situation because WTF. Your daughter is a manipulative ah. Does she have any remorse for what she did to your husband? Don't co-sign a loan or she's gonna tank your credit and you'll still get stuck paying it off. It's funny. I've had assholes in my life who have done really shitty things. But then I read about way worse people on Reddit who make them seem not that bad. Right? She could have had OP's ex-husband sent to jail for something he didn't do. And I bet she didn't bother to apologize since OP said she continued acting up afterward. She's a freaking sociopath or psychopath for that alone. She sounds like she doesn't have any remorse which is disgusting. That is a huge red flag that OP needs to be aware of. I'm personally very skeptical of a one-sided story, especially when it involves a child that requires raising. Parents prefer to blame their children over their poor raising of them. She did what she did because she is your daughter and you raised her. That's something few parents are willing to face. I think OP is hiding some information here, pointing out only the things that would make her child look bad. I did punish her and I did not try to take it out on her. Yes, something's fishy here. I think it was pretty clear in the last post that you were in TA for most of it. In some people's eyes not actively telling her that her college fund was being diverted to her private school tuition makes you the ah, but that's the minority. Some people will raise pitchforks saying you should have told her, but most would agree that it's a gray area. Shit was fucked up enough without constantly reminding her of the consequences of her actions. It does sound like a new therapist may do her good though since she's not handling the current issue well. Yeah, plus sounds like there wasn't another option at that point, so telling her wasn't going to change anything. No judgment here at all, but if she seemed okay then suddenly wasn't and claimed he did something, why would she do that? The behavior after really sounds a lot like something happened to her somewhere, being expelled and similar. Have you actually sat down and talked with her about why this happened? Had counseling of sorts? Therapy? Exactly what I was thinking. I was abused as a child which led me to be a fucking nightmare of a teenager. Acting out, getting expelled, etc. Happy to say I've come out on the other end of it and healed, but most of the time children do not lie about such things. Obviously I don't know enough to make judgments. Just seems like if out of nowhere she started behaving like this, something might have happened to her. Exactly. As soon as I read about her behavior I went, how deep did they investigate? And I am okay with taking money from a college account for private school tuition, but Opie also said she used it for the divorce. A clearly very messed up 13 year no matter what shouldn't have to pay for mom's divorce. If this is a true account, Opie is leaving a lot out of the story.